In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Now that we are on the other side of Christmas, we come to the season of ordinary time for about seven weeks, and then we get interrupted by Lent and Easter, and then we go back to ordinary time. This is a 34-week season. The color is green. It focuses on our daily growth in life. Sometimes we take any day, any given day for granted. We forget that each day is a blessing from God, which gives us an opportunity to build that relationship with God and show God we care by the way we conduct ourselves, both to our Lord and to the community that we serve. As we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace in our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord said to me, You are my servant, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, the Lord says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me and heard my cry. He put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to my God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or offering you wished not, but ears open to obedience. You gave me holocausts or sin offerings you sought not. Then I said, Behold, I come. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me to do your will, O Lord my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul called to the a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul called an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to you who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be holy, with all those everywhere who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the one of whom I said, A man is coming after me who ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. I did not know him, but the reason why I came baptizing with water was that he might be made known to Israel. John testified further, saying, I saw the Spirit come down like a dove from heaven and remain upon him. I did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, On whomever you see the Spirit come down to remain, he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now I have seen and testified that he is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So in December of this year, the YouTube Corporation sent me what is called a 2022 snapshot uh, telling me how many folks had been watching our online videos, how many hours, how many minutes were spent in this ministry that we're offering through these masses that we have done online. And it was really an eye-opener to see how many souls have been affected. According to the YouTube snapshot, in 2022, at least from January to November, 14,400 views took place on the videos that we offered, which totaled 186,800 minutes of viewing and 153 likes on the videos that we have offered. 42 new subscribers uh, were invested in our YouTube Border Town Parish channel. And I guess the number keeps growing. Now, I realize that we are not a big parish in the diocese. We are certainly not the bishop's office or the Vatican or anything like that that has millions upon millions of hours that are invested watching uh, these masses and online offerings. However, 186,000 minutes have been invested by the people who want God to reach their hearts in 11 months in 2022. That is a blessing to me. It's a blessing because what we're trying to do is we're trying to reach out to people to say that we care. And we've talked about this over and over again. We realize that the ministry that we are offering is not going to affect many because there are many in the world who have just lost their faith in God, lost their faith in mass, do not invest themselves in a relationship with God and like any relationship, the more we invest with the people that we love, the more we show we care. And then when we come to the end of life and we stand before God, do we love our God? Do we love our neighbor? Obviously, uh, it is shown by the way we invest ourselves in any given relationship we have. We also know Pew Research Center has told us that scores of people have left the church because of the sex abuse crisis because of the malaise of faith that exists in the Gen X and millennial generations, because of the church's position on social justice issues, our society has moved in one direction and the church remains focused on upholding the dogma and teachings of the church. The dogmas do not change. Those major teachings cannot change. And society wants to move one way, but God is God. And on the last day, there's only one demographic that counts, and it's the one 
that will allow us to get to heaven based on the way we conduct ourselves. Whether we tell God we care, whether we don't care, determines whether we get to heaven or not. And it's all dependent on how faithful we are to the gospel message. And we know, we know that the world wants to move in a certain direction. That has been made very clear in our scripture readings in the book of Isaiah. The word Isaiah, the Lord is salvation. The Lord is my strength. Isaiah was told by the Lord that he's going to fail, that the people are going to fall. And they did fall. But Isaiah was still called to go out, answer that call from God, and preach that message to the ends of the earth, because that is what God has called us to do. In the Gospel of John, uh, that's what we that's our focus for this first week of ordinary time in cycle A. We'll be focusing primarily on the Gospel of Matthew. But in the Gospel of John, I focus in the 18th chapter of St. John's Gospel. We just read from John's Gospel today. Uh, normally, cycle A is devoted to the Gospel of Matthew teaching us the basics of the faith, but we start with John and talking about why Jesus was baptized, why Jesus came into the world, and what Jesus' purpose was, knowing that this was not Jesus' world. This world has chosen to move another direction, which is very evident in today's age with our government, with our world politics, with the what people want as opposed to what God is telling us to do. What does Jesus say in chapter 18 of John's Gospel, verse 36? He says, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. Obviously, Jesus is not talking about necessarily just the Jewish population. He's talking about the mob that has been incited to nail Jesus to the cross, which is Jews and Gentiles and anyone else standing at that foot of the cross that were being led by the leaders of the church of the first century who wanted to nail God to a cross. Our ministry, our ministry is to keep preaching Christ crucified, keep preaching the gospel message. St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, Paul who dedicated his life to killing Christians before his conversion, changed his ways and noticed that in Corinth, even in the first century, the people of Corinth turned away from God and began doing things at the liturgy that were unchristian and exceedingly sinful. So Paul had to write a letter to the Corinthians. He wrote two of them to correct the error in their ways so that they stayed true to the gospel message. This is the key of our life that we need to keep coming every week to listen to God's word, to understand what God wants us to do to get to heaven, and then to follow it, knowing very well that as soon as we leave this mass, there is going to be a whole lot of other people that are going to want to live in a different direction. They're going to want to push us and condition us to live in a way that's contrary to the gospel. 186,000 hours have been invested in watching these masses to try to learn about God. Whether I do it successfully or not, that's up to God to decide. But we have tried to instill and condition people to follow the ways that will get them to heaven. The world wants to condition you to follow ways that are otherwise. But eventually, our life is going to end. The world is going to end. And then it is us and God where God asks two simple questions. Do you love your God? Do you love your neighbor? What have we done to invest our faith lives in building this church, building our relationship with God, and sustaining what those before us have given us, which is why we keep talking about supporting your parish, time, talent, financial resources, whatever it may be. We say a week constitutes 168 hours to invest one hour going to Mass, one hour in prayer, that's two hours out of 168. Do we even do that? Do we take 15 minutes a day to pick up our rosary, to pray for the sick, to pray for the dead, to pray for each other, to pray for our local communities? Obviously, there's a good number of people that have been watching these masses and understand what we're doing. I have tried to give out rosaries to people in our community, those olive wood rosaries that we got from the Holy Land. We have been distributing them out left and right. The poor Claire nuns have been making rosaries for me that people keep taking left and right. I hope and I pray that those individuals who are taking those rosaries will spend that 15 minutes a day 
praying for those most in need of God's mercy, especially good folks like you who are watching these Masses online. Please know we'll continue to do what we can to produce these Masses because you are worth it. You are a blessing. You are a treasure. And we'll do what we can to take care of you. Please continue to pray for us, to pray for each other, to invest in this faith, to understand the world that we truly wish to spend with God is the world in Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem, where we will spend the rest of our existence with no more suffering, no more tears, no more sadness, only peace in our hearts. And as St. Paul says, may the word of God be enriched in our hearts so that whatever we do, in word or in deed, we do in the name of the Lord. May God bless you during this season of ordinary time. This is our prayer. I believe, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. As souls committed to building that relationship with God, let us take a moment to offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. We pray that the leaders of our church may allow that light of Christ to lead them and guide them towards proper action. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this month where we commemorate Roe versus Wade, that we remember that all life is sacred from the moment of conception until natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for mothers, that they may always take life seriously, especially that in the womb, putting the needs of their child ahead of their own needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of St. Anne's and St. Patrick's, and for all those who support them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that they may find God's love in the hands of their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may be welcomed by God in this heavenly kingdom. I've been preaching at our Masses about a couple named George and Lorraine Vlach who were not afforded a Christian funeral, I'd like to offer this Mass for them and for all those whose memory, whose intentions we've offered this last week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, continue to hear our prayers and be with us always. Fill us with your love as we journey through life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in yours 
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, 
grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of our Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of that peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, bread of life, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Pour on us, Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one of mind and of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So as we celebrate these seven weeks of ordinary time leading to Lent, there are all kinds of activities that are taking care uh, place at both parishes of which we wish you to be aware. Uh, both uh, parishes are going to be taking a collection for what is called Harbor House. For those who are suffering, I believe we are collecting socks and slippers. For those who are in need, if you'd like to donate towels and other toiletries of that nature, please feel free to do so. In the month of February, we are going to take what's called a water leaf bottle collection for those women uh, in pregnancy centers who are asking for aid, we certainly want to promote life, especially in the womb, as we commemorate, once again, the anniversary of Roe v. Wade. We certainly want to tell women who have a child that uh, we care for them, that we want to help them, that we want to guide them, and that life is a gift from God that should not be taken away. We also are going to have a parish appreciation dinner on February 11th over at St. Patrick's Church with a polka mass at 4 o'clock, followed by the dinner downstairs in the church basement. On March 11th, we're going to have an Irish mass and dinner with a 4 o'clock mass on March 11th, followed by corned beef and cabbage, Irish stew, all those kind of things, and you certainly are most welcome to join us for that. We're just going to keep plodding along, doing our thing. As we've told you, our uh, St. Anne's sound system outside is now completely paid for. We received another $1,000 donation, which takes us over the top to our $8,500 goal. We'll now be able to do an outdoor sound system for St. Anne, getting ready for our novena and those outdoor masses that the St. Anne's parishioners very much like during the summer. Over at St. Patrick's, we have a friend from Texas that is committed to giving us $25,000 for our gymnasium project. Wally Martin was kind enough to install new windows on the shuffleboard floor of our gymnasium court. We're going to put carpeting on the asbestos tiles. Uh, Van Drunen Farms is going to help us put a new ceiling to cover the damaged ceiling that we have. 
We've already taken care of the first floor in the gymnasium. We are well on our way of finishing the bathrooms on the first floor of the gym. We've gotten carts for our tables and chairs, all kinds of nice stuff. We're going to continue renovating that gym. we got to keep renovating our properties, upgrading our properties so that we can use them for years to come. Once again, that gymnasium is kind of like a community center for the city, which is where we have emergency centers and we have large functions take place in moments because there is no other place in the city where people can gather like that. So whatever you can do to help, we have talked about this ad nauseum. $25 book donation, $100 brick donation, $2,500 pew donation, and we've got a lot of pew donations that have been great. $220,000 is our parish debt over in St. Pat's and Laments. We need to eradicate that debt. We need to show the bishop and the diocese that we are serious about maintaining the parishes we have. We have this one benefactor who watches these online masses, part of that 14,400 minutes that we offer each week, uh, each year. Uh, this person very much has been supporting us, and we're very much indebted to uh, all of you for your kindness and generosity. People need to start looking at that debt and getting rid of it so that St. Patrick's can continue to prosper and do well for the community. We had a huge crowd for Christmas Masses, for Guadalupe Masses. There is so much potential in our area. St. Anne's is a national shrine. No one should touch this shrine. We will do what we can to preserve them, but we need your help. One million dollars for a building donation. It's a pipe dream, but if somebody has it, we eradicate all our problems at both parishes. If you could do what you can, we'd appreciate it. Please know we continue to pray for you. We very much love you in God's name. We'll keep doing what we can for you. Keep praying and supporting us, all you online viewers and all our people and friends throughout the world. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God.